What actually is in this Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing? Probably most importantly, um, it now has within it a mechanism whereby countries that are providing genetic resources can follow up and attempt to bring legal action against um, people who they think aren't complying with mutually agreed terms with it when they were provided access in the countries where they're being used. This was always something that was missing from the Convention on Biological Diversity, a mechanism for follow-up, for ensuring compliance. Now there's something in the architecture of this, this protocol um, that, that if so-called user countries are now um, undertaking to put systems in place to facilitate that compliance. And that's a significant step forward, certainly. For people who work in agriculture, especially plant breeders and the like, we have an international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture which has a multilateral benefit sharing system. Why do we need a Nagoya protocol on benefit sharing? Ah, well as far as the multilateral system of access and benefit sharing um, created by the treaty is concerned, uh, one of the, the issues at play in the negotiations of the protocol was that the protocol might ignore it and simply plow over it and, and render, it, render it in a sense redundant. Um, had the protocol uh, explicitly stated its scope is applying to all genetic resources, um, including plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, and not included within it language whereby it recognized the pre-existence of the multilateral system of access and benefit sharing under the treaty, it would have, in a sense, overlapped it or laid over it, and it created new obligations uh, for actors like the, the CG centers that are hosting international collections of plant genetic resources. And it wasn't really until the final moments of the final days that we knew for sure that the protocol would have within it language that adequately recognized the international treaty and adequately recognized mechanisms under the treaty like the agreements between the CG centers and the governing body of the international treaty so that they wouldn't be um, interfered with uh, by, by the protocol. So on balance, a good thing? Uh, it's hard to say right now what will happen, but on balance, yes, a good thing in as much as the international community can now take a deep breath, say they've moved to the next stage, and now I think we'll see in the next few years what, what will people do with the protocol? Will it be implemented in serious ways? Will it be, will it be used as, a, as, a, as a, a springboard for investigating uh, still more um, development of appropriate norms for access and benefit sharing? Or will it, because not everyone's satisfied, it's a compromised text, will it contribute to a further entrenchment of, of distrust? God, I really hope not. Uh, it would otherwise be such a shame, because really the whole benefit of this is there's now an agreement. An agreement presumably means a meeting of minds, at least to a certain extent, and that people can now move to the next stage in accessing using and sharing benefits and getting on with the job.